Hi everybody, and welcome to Spanish with Elena, the best YouTube channel to learn to speak Spanish. Hola a todos y a todas, valientes amantes del español, y bienvenidos a vuestro canal, Spanish with Elena, el mejor canal de YouTube para aprender a hablar español. In this video, I would like to keep sharing with you more basic real-life Spanish phrases that I would love you to start using right now. I would like to keep giving you more explanations about why we say things the way we do in Spanish. But especially, I would really love to share with you more tips that help you to learn to speak Spanish in an easier and more effective way. That is definitely my main concern, just so you know. So, what are you going to learn in this video? Well, there are two expressions. You look, you seem. Just one expression in Spanish because they both mean the same. They are both translated as pareces. This is what this video is going to be about. So, you're going to learn how to tell people how they look or how they seem. Not so much regarding their physical appearance, but the emotions that they show, that they are showing. Maybe at first it might not seem to be so important, but in real life it is. It is really important to be able to show people how you perceive them. Especially if you want to help them, for instance. So, ¿estamos preparados para seguir aprendiendo un poquito más de español? ¿Sí? De acuerdo. 3, 2, 1, comenzamos. Let's the party start. Because this is the attitude. Learning can be fun. Learning can be a party. So, let's have fun. And don't be shy. We are all friends here, okay? I want you all to feel comfortable and safe because this is a safe place for you to learn. Primera frase. Pareces cansado. Remember that Adjectives in Spanish have gender and number, so you have to be very careful. In this case, you don't know who the subject is. I decided that the subject is a guy, that's why I say cansado. But if it was a woman, you would have to say cansada. And just one more thing, like I always tell you, pause the video and repeat after me as many times as you want so you can keep practicing and improving your pronunciation and your accent, ¿ok? Pareces agotado. Tercera frase. Pareces enfadado. Cuarta frase. Pareces triste. Okay, about the adjective triste. It's the same for the masculine and for the feminine. So in this case, if the subject was a woman, she, we would say, ella parece triste. The same as, él parece triste. About the plural, it happens the same with the gender. But you have to be very careful with the plural because you do have to put an S. At the end, ellos parecen tristes. Ellas parecen tristes. Quinta frase. Pareces 
molesto. Sexta frase. Pareces asustada. Séptima frase. Pareces decepcionado. Octava frase. Pareces entusiasmada. Ok, about the next two sentences. There are a few things I'd like to share with you about them. Let's start with the adjective feliz. It is the same for the masculine and for the feminine. Ella parece feliz. Él parece feliz. However, pay attention to the plural. Ellos parecen felices. Ellas parecen felices. The gender doesn't change, but the plural is different because it ends with a set. So you have to say felices. And about the translation of the adjective feliz. Feliz in English is happy. And the verb to be can be either ser or estar. Both are correct. It depends on how you feel. I mean, if you are happy because right now your life is great, you can say, soy feliz. If you're happy but not all the time, just because something great has happened to you, you can say, estoy feliz. Hoy estoy feliz. Pareces contento. About the adjective contento, contento is translated into English as glad. I'm glad. Estoy contento or contenta. And remember, with the adjective contento or contenta, you can only use the verb estar, never ser. The thing is that when I was translating this sentence, I thought it was wrong to say you look or you seem glad. Maybe I'm wrong and you can correct me. Remember, English is not my first language. But for me, In this case, I should have said, you look or you seem happy. Even though in Spanish, you can make a choice between contento or contenta and feliz. In English, I think you can't. The difference between the word happy, feliz, and glad, contento or contenta in Spanish is a very... Deep one. To feel happy, ser feliz, means that you are fulfilled, that your life fulfills you. But when you say that you are contento or contenta, estás contento or contenta, what you mean is that something great has just happened. Like, for instance, you just won the lottery. Or you just got your driving license. Or you just got a promotion. Or you just got a new job. Something specific is making you feel contento or contenta. But to feel happy, ser feliz, is much deeper. Until now, in the sentences we've been working with, We have only worked with one subject, tú, you. But this expression, like in English, you can use it with any subject. So before seeing new sentences with different subjects, let's practice the present simple of the verb parecer in Spanish. Even though it is an irregular verb in Spanish, it's not so hard. It's not so difficult. You'll see. Just practice. Practice a lot. And you won't have any trouble with it, you'll see. Okay, simple present of the verb parecer, to seem or to look, in Spanish. 
Yo parezco, tú pareces, él, ella parece, nosotros, nosotras parecemos, vosotros, vosotras parecéis, ellos, ellas parecen. And now the best part. Let's put all this into practice. Primera frase. Parecéis perdidos. ¿Necesitáis ayuda? Be careful with the gender and the adjectives. In this case, the subject seems to be vosotros. Vosotros parecéis perdidos. Masculine and plural. When regarding the gender in Spanish, there is something I think I've never mentioned before. If you have a group of people, plural, and in that group of people you have both men and women, in Spanish we use the masculine. Nowadays it might sound a bit sexist and discriminatory, but that's the way we say it. Sorry, girls. Segunda frase. Tus padres parecen muy jóvenes. ¿Cuántos años tienen? Tus padres, subject, ellos. Jóvenes, adjective, masculine and plural. And the verb, parecen, because of the subject, ellos. Ellos parecen. Otra frase. Another sentence. Últimamente, Álvaro parece muy nervioso. Álvaro, subject, he, parece muy nervioso. Nervioso. Singular and masculine. About the word últimamente, lately, I put it at the beginning of the sentence. But in Spanish, you can put it at the beginning or at the end. It doesn't matter. Okay, this time we're going to use the subject you, to once again, like with the previous sentences, the first part of the video. Pareces cabreado. ¿Quieres que hablemos? The subject seems to be a guy. Tú, you. Pareces cabreado. Masculine and singular. Parecéis estresados. Necesitáis unas vacaciones. In this case, like I told you before, we don't know exactly if the subject is vosotros or vosotras. But the verb, it is parecéis, and the adjective, estresados. Vamos a por la sexta frase. Claudia parece diferente. ¿Nuevo corte de pelo? Tal vez. Ok, the subject is Claudia. She, ella. Parece diferente. Ok, diferente is an adjective that is the same for the masculine and for the feminine. So, no big deal. And it's singular because we are talking about one person. Claudia. Probably, you may have already realized what I'm about to say, because you are very smart, but I'm going to say it anyway. The adjectives, most of them, ending with the vowel E, are those adjectives that are the same for the masculine and for the feminine. If you find an exception for this, please comment below. Séptima frase. Parecéis furiosos. ¿Qué ha pasado? Ok, the subject. Vosotros o vosotras. Parecéis. And then, what I told you. Furiosos. Masculine and plural. Now I'm kind of intrigued about what happens. So these guys are furiosos. But don't worry. I'm not going to make up any stories, but if you want, you're more than welcome. 
Luis parece un poquito celoso. ¿No crees? Luis, subject, he, él, parece. And then, un poquito celoso. Celoso, masculine and singular. Un poquito. Sometimes you can use this expression. Un poco, un poquito. Un poquito is, I don't know, we use it a lot. I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong, but for me, it is a way of paying attention to something that's a bit negative, but you don't want to be rude about it. But you have to say it. You know what I mean? And especially, you don't want to make a big deal out of it. Okay? Un poco, un poquito, they both mean the same. You can pick up the one you prefer. Okay? Un poco, un poquito. Penúltima frase. Ya estamos acabando. Pareces bastante liado ahora. ¿Hablamos después? Ok, the subject, tú, pareces, bastante. Bastante means pretty. In British English, quite. Liado. It means the same as ocupado, but let's say is more informal. Don't freak out. I'm not gonna keep talking about the word después. I've talked a lot about it in previous videos, but remember why we use it and don't forget to use it. Después. Última frase. I've saved the best for the end. ¿Qué mal aspecto tienes? It has nothing to do with all the sentences we've seen before. But in English, it is the same. You look terrible. You look awful. So if you want to tell someone that, in Spanish, you have to use this expression. ¿Qué mal aspecto tienes? Okay, I know that was the last sentence. But let me add another one. Because... That one was a bit sad, and I didn't want to end this video like that. So, let's say the opposite. You look great. ¡Qué buen aspecto tienes! Okay, so that was all. Thank you very much for watching. Muchísimas gracias por ver este video. I hope you're learning a lot with my videos, and I hope you're practicing And especially, I hope you are putting into practice everything you've learned. Nos vemos muy pronto con más videos. See you soon with more videos. Hasta pronto. Adiós. And please remember to like and subscribe.